high energy compounds. So the energy which is liberated during the metabolism of monosaccharides and the beta oxidation of fatty acids in the mitochondria or maybe the metabolism of amino acids so may not be required immediately because we have to store some form of energy after the metabolism has been completed in our store box in the cell. So in the cell we have such storage boxes to store the energy after the oxidation of these micronutrients called as mitochondria. So these mitochondria are called as powerhouses of the cell because these mitochondria traps the energy released from the oxidation of all these micronutrients into various molecules. So the energy released during the catabolic process is captured. That is the energy which is released in the form of heat. So the same heat energy is captured in the form of a group of compounds known as high energy phosphates. So not only high energy phosphates, we also have high energy compounds which belong to sulfur group. So we have two types of high energy compounds. Compounds belongs to phosphates and these compounds belongs to sulfur group. So the most important member of this group is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So it is a compound that liberates 7 kilocalories per mole of energy or furthermore on hydrolysis that is the reason it is called as high energy compound because any compound on hydrolysis if it liberates greater than or equal to 7 kilocalories per mole it is called as high energy compound. In such cases, there will be a decrease in the free energy that can be represented as delta G. And under standard conditions, it is called as high energy compound, which means delta G is greater than or equal to minus 7 kilocalories per mole. The minus why we are using because we are losing that energy in the form of heat as a free energy. So the best example in this category will be ATP. ATP is taken under high energy compound because it is liberating 7.3 kilocalories per mole on hydrolysis but whenever you are mentioning about delta G free energy you always use the symbol minus which means minus 7.3 kilocalories per mole. So what are the different types of high energy compounds we are seeing in the cell? As I already mentioned in the beginning of the session that they are categorized under two headings one is the phosphate and second one is the sulfur compounds. So what are the phosphate compounds? The best example for the phosphate compounds will be nucleotides like ATP, GTP, UTP as well as UDP glucose, creatinine phosphate, arginine phosphate, phosphoenol pyruvate, carbamoyl phosphate, right all these are taken under phosphate groups and there is a big list over here. And what about the sulfur compounds? Easy way to remember is all coenzyme A derivatives or high energy compounds like sulfur compounds because why we are calling it as sulfur because coenzyme A is present in the form of COASH sulfhydryl group is present in the coenzyme A that is the reason we are calling it as a sulfur compounds like acetyl coenzyme A, succinyl CoA, fatty acyl CoA, HMG CoA so all the compounds which has a coenzyme A are considered to be the sulfur containing high energy compounds majority of this. And again I am repeating the statement that a compound which liberates greater than 7 kilocalories per mole that is greater than 7 kilocalories per mole is called as high energy compound and the same compound any compound which liberates energy less than 7 kilocalories per mole on hydrolysis is called as low energy compound which means a decrease in the free energy will be less than 7 kilocalories per mole. So how can you express delta G? less than minus 7 kilocalories per mole. So what are the low energy compounds here? Glucose 1-phosphate, fructose 6-phosphate, glucose 6-phosphate, glycerol 3-phosphate, AMP and ADP all these compounds have 
a delta G which is free energy less than minus 7 kilo calories per mole. That's the reason all these are taken under low energy compounds. So this is what you need to know about the high energy compounds versus the low energy compounds.